Hello and how are we going? Here is a short sharp introduction to short crust pastry. That's pretty good. Shallots, they're like onions only smaller. We have 125 grams of butter that's been in the freezer. We have 250 grams of plain flour, one pinch of salt, Bam. And we have two egg yolks and a little bit of water. Consider it two tablespoons. For everyone out there that likes to get all maths about it. First thing we're gonna do is sift our flour. We want everything to stay as light and as aerated as possible, okay? We also want everything to stay as cold as possible, hence the freezer bit. You could dice this butter incredibly small if you like, and if you have a food processor, brrr, waz it in the food processor. But what I do is I freeze my butter, and I put it through the cheese grater. Now this is a Delia Smith technique. So I've stolen this from Delia, but she won't mind. Now that's making it all really even, really consistent little curls of butter on the inside of this grater here. It's also gonna make them even easier when we come to rubbing the flour into the butter. For this one, what's really important is not overworking our flour, not melting our butter too much because that's gonna cause our dough to separate. We wanna be rubbing these together until we're forming what's called the crumb. So the same look and texture and everything as almond meal. Just like with our sweet short crust pastry, we don't wanna rub the butter in all the way. Okay, beautiful. Almond meal, gonna make a little well, gonna bust up our little yolks here. Just put a little bit in, we can always add a little bit more. Let it coat, let it go nice and even. I'm gonna add the rest of this mix. And then I'm just gonna turn this out onto the bench because we've weighed everything and we're beautifully accurate chefs. We know that these numbers are pretty right. All it might need is just a little splash more water. I'm just wetting my hands. We're only sort of uh, five or 10 mils off. So if your hands are still damp, you know, that's actually gonna help a lot. And then we have our wonderful short crust pastry. Massive, massive difference in what you buy and, and making it for yourself. Incredibly versatile. Pies, you know, other pies, quiche, that's a kind of pie, but um, there's so much you can do. Make short crust, let me know. How about this? So you've made our wonderful short crust pastry. If you had, say, some ragu, some bolognese left over, or you made a stew or a casserole or a chili or any kind of wet braise, braised lamb, ossobuco, beef cheeks, let's make a pie, let's make a fucking pie. This is uh, some beef rump that I've braised in red wine and rosemary. I can have a recipe for this for you if you like, but really whatever it is that you're doing is totally fine. We're gonna line our Pyrex dish with our beautiful short crust pastry, and we're actually gonna pipe on a potato top because I love potato top pies. Step one, make sure we have enough flour to roll out our pastry. I'm gonna leave this pastry pretty thick when I roll it out because the pastry is really quite a component. You know what I mean? For me with, uh, with a savory pie, I like to get a good whack. You can also do the same recipe and use um, pork fat or beef lard as well to make our, um, our pastry too. Um, so depending on what kind of pie or anything that you wanted to make, um, you can alter the recipe to suit there as well. So just be gentle. If it's a little bit cold, it might crack more. And the worst case scenario, if you have to go like a Franken tart and sort of push bits together, it still works. So don't even worry about it. How big do we need to be able to go? Not that much bigger, really. We're actually most of the way there. I can see with this that if I'd literally added one more splash of water when I was working with the dough, it'd be so much easier to roll out. It's not gonna be an issue when it cooks because it comes back together really easy, you see. So it's not super dry, um, but it's honestly just a matter of that one little bit more water, um, just, just for the ease of rolling it out more than anything else. Cool, looking good. So I'm just gonna come along and trim the excess. Obviously we need it to come up the sides of the bowl, um, so we don't wanna get rid of everything. Okay, and then we're gonna do our same trick, where we roll it onto the pin, roll it up, 
and back on here. We roll it back over. And now like you see in this braking, it's totally fine because when we come to so just push this back on here, there's not gonna be any issues whatsoever. So really don't be stressed. Like I say, a Franken tart happens. And then I'm just gonna trim the excess pastry. So if you remember with our um, chocolate tart, we baked with the excess on and then we trim the pastry afterwards. That's a really good way to do things like the tarts um, because that presentation, that perfect slice of pastry is incredibly important. This is very, very practical, the pastry that we're putting in here. You know what I mean? So this is really a vehicle just for when we get under, it's gonna be plated. It's not gonna be something that you're gonna stand up to eat. You absolutely could do what we're doing in little individual pies if you had a muffin tin or something like that. Our excess can be reformed and used again. That's totally fine. Uh, if you wanted to put a top on this, you could, and you could use these uh, to make the top or to decorate over the top and things like that as well. We're just gonna get this all nice and even. And now we're just coming around, forming this crust. So, now we're gonna put our Wunderbar mix. Also from our um, chocolate tart episode, you remember that we blind baked our pastry and we're not doing that this time. Well, because this is gonna be in the oven for probably a good 40 minutes, half an hour to 40 minutes, that's definitely gonna cook our pastry at the same time. When we went in with our chocolate tart filling, we only went back in for about 12 to 14 more minutes. So it was really important that our pastry was almost cooked. Whereas now, we want our pastry raw. It's gonna cook from start to finish with the filling in as well. See, I'm not over filling. When everything melts, both the fat, the collagen, once they all get hot and melt, that gravy is gonna fill up all the gaps and I don't want it bubbling over the surface of the pastry, okay? What I thought was, how am I gonna get this potato on top of this pie? My folks used to just spoon it on and like fork it over the pie, is that like a thing? But I thought, well, we need to try to make it a little more, you know, fancy. So I'm gonna try piping elevated, that's it. I'm so elevated, you already know. So I'm gonna chuck this potato in our piping bag here. I picked this up from Coles for like $2. They called it an icing bag, but you don't know what I'm doing with it. If you've got a slightly bigger piping bag, I would recommend using it. All right, let's see if this works. Well, this is gonna take ages. I mean, obviously you, you don't have to go to these lengths, but man, shepherd's pie like you've never bloody seen it. I'm gonna chuck this in the oven now for probably about 40 minutes at 170. We'll see how we go there. Uh, you know, just go by the color. If it's starting to get too colored on top, just drop it down. If the pastry's not cooked, give it longer. It's very straightforward. Wow. Whoa. Our exceptional short crust pastry bottom, potato topped, beef ragu pie. Shallots, they're like onions, only smaller.